In this segment, we're going to talk about probabilistic context-free grammars. So we're going to start off by talking about non-probabilistic context-free grammars, or CFGs. So a CFG is defined by a four-tuple, NTSR, which consists of non-terminals, terminals, a start symbol, and rules. So if we think about the constituency grammars that we've seen so far and kind of cast them into this terminology, uh, the non-terminals consist of these symbols we were seeing like S, NP, VP, PP, as well as the part of speech tags that we had, DT, NN, VBD, IN, NNS, and we're going to kind of build up a little grammar here. So these POS tags are what we're going to call pre-terminals. Um, and this is kind of special terminology for uh, constituency grammars in particular, where we think about the layer before the terminals as being something special. OK, then the terminals are going to be our words. So they're going to be the children ate cake, um, you know, with spoon, et cetera. Like, you know, basically we just have some kind of vocabulary and that's our terminals. All right, the start symbol is S and the rules are going to consist of two types. We're going to have binary rules, uh, which we think of, you know, like this. So we write the source symbol on the left and then the yield on the right. Uh, so we can have generally a bunch of different productions for each, uh, for each non-terminal symbol. And these are, so like I, like I said, these are binary rules because each uh, symbol rewrites into two symbols. We also have what we call unary rules, which are going to fall into two types. We can have unary rules involving non-terminals, like this, or we can have what's called our lexicon, uh, which is basically the last layer of the tree where part of speech tags rewrite as words. All right. So we've got a grammar here. So what we can do is we can start with the start symbol S, and we can just iteratively apply these rules. So maybe our only option here is to rewrite this as NPVP. Then for this NP, we can decide what rule we want to apply, maybe DTNN. Um, and then, you know, the only rules we can apply are, well, we can apply, we can get the from DT. And then we either get cake or spoon here. Um, we pick one, etc. We can generate a sentence this way. OK, so what's a probabilistic context-free grammar? So a PCFG is the same thing as before, but rules have probabilities. OK, and the probabilities sum to one per parent. So what I mean by this is if we think about attaching probabilities to these rules above, um, you know, maybe we have a probability of one half, one half associated with these two rules about NP. And so th these, these are constrained to sum to one because we need to have a probability distribution, uh, basically P of rule given parent of rule. And so all the rules that rewrite from NP have to sum to one. So in this case, uh, VP goes to VBD and 
NP, you know, maybe this one would have probability of one fourth, and the, the, our unary rule here would have probability three fourths. These are our two rules that involve VPs. Uh, and this S rule has to have probability one because there's only one rule for S here. All right. So the probability of a tree is simply the product over the rules in that tree of the probability of the rule given its parent. Uh, so if I show you a parse, you can just multiply the probability of each production together in order to get the, in order to get the probability of the whole tree. So the question is, where do these probabilities come from? Uh, so we actually need uh, a few steps before we can think about taking our uh, probabilistic context-free grammar and doing parsing with it. Okay, so the first thing we need uh, is, well, okay, so, so first, typically what we think about being given is we are given a tree bank of sentences labeled with trees. And we want to go from this tree bank, we want to extract a grammar from this tree bank, and then we want to be able to parse with this grammar. So the first step of this process is going to be what we call binarization. Um, and this is going to be turning the trees into trees consisting of binary and unary productions. Uh, rather than kind of higher order uh, n -ary productions. The second step is going to be estimation of rule probabilities. All right, this step is going to be very easy. It's going to just consist of counting and normalizing occurrences of different rules. So for example, if we see noun phrase rewriting as this rule three times and this rule four times, you get probability three sevenths with the one rule and four sevenths with the other rule. And this falls out of the fact that this is the same kind of generative count, uh, the same sort of generative multinomial model as we had for hidden Markov models. And so the way that maximizing the likelihood of the data works out uh, ends up being the same. Uh, so this process exactly corresponds to maximum likelihood estimation. All right, and then the third piece here uh, is inference. So that's asking about the most likely, tr the most likely tree given a sentence. So I give you a new sentence and uh, we ask, okay, what is the tree that most likely generated this sentence? And so again, this is gonna look like uh, kind of similar to uh, hidden Markov models in the way that the probability computation works out. And again, we're gonna have a dynamic program that allows us to do it. All right, so that's where we're going here. The one piece of this I'm gonna talk about before finishing out this segment is binarization. Uh, and binarization is the process of, as I said, turning trees into uh, binary or unary, uh, trees consisting of only binary or unary productions. So for example, We can have fairly high arity productions, like sold the book to her for $3. This is a verb phrase. But what we, we don't want to have these four-way branching rules. And the reason is that when we try to do, well, first of all, it's going to make estimation of rule probabilities more fragile, because we're going to have all these like really big involved rules that don't work so well. And then uh, when we do inference, uh, these are going to cause a kind of computational blow up. Uh, it's gonna, it turns out that our inference is going to scale uh, with a kind of exponent in the uh, corresponding to the highest arity rule that you have in your grammar. So 
what we need to do is we need to turn this into a binary tree. So this looks roughly like uh, the idea of turning a grammar into Chomsky normal form, if you've seen that before. Um, we are actually not turning our trees into Chomsky normal form because, like I said, we're going to still allow unary rules that don't just happen at the terminal layer. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, this is the correct one. So what have we done here? We have taken our rule and split it up into three different rules and introduced these intermediate symbols. So the, and what we're doing is we want to assign probability p to this particular rule. And then we have probability 1 associated with the next two rules. And the reason those are probability one is because the rules themselves encode what should come out of them. Basically, we are making the entire decision at the first step, but then when we get, you know, when we, when we get down to these subsequent steps, we've already encoded the yield of the rule in the grammar symbol itself. And so then the, the parser can just kind of spit out these, uh, can just kind of spit out these symbols. Okay, so this is what we call lossless binarization. Um, and we can also have so-called lossy binarization. Where, let's say we were to just say, okay, we're not going to bother trying to do this crazy rule encoding. We're just going to put VPs all the way down here. All right. This, is, this does not preserve the semantics of the PCFG because now all these VPs are kind of competing for the same probability mass. And in particular, this is not actually a great assumption to make for a context-free grammar because you're going to have some probability of now any VP you rewrite is going to just want to spit out prepositional phrases, which is not the right thing for a VP to be doing. So it's really important to think about the binarization and what intermediate symbols get introduced. Now, normally people do something in between, and we'll talk about that uh, in a later segment here. But what we've seen so far is basically we can take uh, a tree bank, we can binarize it, turn it into this set of trees that are binary, and then we just read a PCFG off of that. So we estimate these probabilities through counting, and that's going to equip us with a PCFG that we're then going to be able to parse with. And that's the end of this segment.